Monday morning. This is Fun Fun Function, a Monday morning show where we try to become more excited and confident about programming by exploring old wisdom, wild ideas, and having fun. Streams are really just what it sounds like, a stream of data. You can think of it as a uh, an actual real-life stream with the uh, barrels floating down on it or something. Where you can attach a thingy at the end of the stream to handle each individual barrel of data. You can also think of stream as the result of promise and array having a baby. An array, that's, uh, that's a series of multiple objects that are already there, while a promise is a uh, the notion of a single object that might be there eventually. A stream is a flow of values that will arrive whenever they just bloody well feel like. Just to get down and dirty really quickly, we're going to look at the most simple implementation of a stream that I could think of. Normally, I would ask you to pause the video and take a look at this before moving on, but let's face it, you're not gonna do that. So instead, I will leave this room for 30 seconds and let you contemplate this code in solitude before I tell you what I think of it. This is stupid number stream. It is an object that contains a series of numbers that will arrive in the future. To subscribe to the stream, we pass a callback function, in this case console.log, to the each method of the stream, and that will, unsurprisingly, log the numbers out to the console. Stream libraries such as uh, the one built into Node.js or RxJS or Bacon or Highland.js, they all have a multitude of other functionality, but in the end, that is the core essence of what a stream is. It's just a way of modeling a flow of values that is arriving whenever they feel like. But what is the point of streams? What, what do we use streams for? Historically, the most common use case for streams is when you need to process a, a pile of data that is so huge that you cannot fit all of it in memory. And you need to do some kind of transformation on each row. If you read those 10 gigabytes of data into memory, you would probably run out of memory. And even if you had all that memory, it would still take tons of time to actually read it up into memory before you could start processing it. A better way to deal with this problem is to read one row at a time and process each one individually. You model the big file reading as a stream and then you attach a handler at the end of the stream and you process each row individually until you're done. I'm gonna show you an example to keep this from getting too abstract. Let's imagine that we have this huge file of customers that uh, is comma separated. So we have Matthias here, he has made two orders this, uh, this quarter or whatever, and Fluffkins has made six and King Mukla has made four. Right, cool, so that's our file. Uh, we need to read that in, and for that we're going to need to pull in the FS namespace. Fire FS, cool. And then we are going to create a read stream. Uh, from customers.csv. Typing is hard. Now, this is going to return a node stream, but mm, node streams are good and all, but we want something more powerful, so we're going to pull in Highland. And Highland is yes, a handy stream library. Uh, and we're gonna just do npm install. Highland. We're getting some warnings here because I uh, I don't have a package.json in my desktop directory where we're playing around with this, but that doesn't matter. Just just clear that away. Now, in order to make this node stream into a Highland stream, we just call Highland on it like that, and now that's a Highland stream, and we can call the function each on that, and we're 
just gonna pass that to console.log and see what this turns out to be and run it. Okay, no such file or directory. All right, it's customers. Let's try it again. All right, we're getting just a buffer and that is because we are not passing any uh, string encoding to the uh, read stream. It's not gonna assume anything and just give us the byte buffer, but that doesn't help us much. So we're gonna add UTF-8 and we are good. Bam. So we're getting the contents of the file here. I'm not sure if we're getting this as one string or as um, uh, as individual lines from the read stream. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna add a little something here, like each x, and see what that turns out. And again. You see, see here, we are getting this as one big string and we don't want that, we want it as lines. So let's just do a split here. Let's see what that turns out. Cool, now we're getting it as, uh, as strings. So next up we want to transform this into uh, some kind of more handy actual objects uh, instead of these, these uh, comma separated strings. First, I guess that we want to split them up and create arrays of the um, of the strings. So I'm just gonna go and map each uh, value, and I'm going to call split on each value, and we're gonna split by comma. See what that gives us. Not quite what I expected. I think it's because this x is when I plus these two, it's gonna concatenate them. So, right, that looks better. Arrays are a bit cumbersome to deal with, so I wanna make this into a, a proper data object with properties and stuff. So let's try and uh, call that parts. We're getting, calling these. I'm gonna call that, a, that array parts. Then we are going to return a new object. I'm adding these here, these extra parentheses, otherwise uh, the JavaScript interpreter will interpret this as a function block, but I wanted to interpret it as an object. And uh, we are going to call the first one name and then parts zero. And then I'm going to call the num purchases here uh, called uh, get the parts dot one. Run that and see what we get. Okay, cool. Now we're getting somewhere here. We have each object here and it looks pretty, right? But Matthias here, we want to filter him out because it's not a particularly interesting customer. He's only made two purchases this quarter. So I'm going to call a filter on him and we're gonna do customer, I wanna filter the least useful customers out, uh, dot num purchases, and when that is, we only want the customers that have more than two purchases, and that gives us just these two. And yes, for good measure, we wanna get only the names, so I'm gonna do customer, And that will just give us the names. What I want you to take away from this code is that we are just working with very simple functions here that do almost nothing and they have no side effects and that makes it really easy to reason about our code. Another use case for streams that have started gaining traction in the recent years is in front-end programming where things such as keyboard input or mouse movement or mouse clicks can be modeled as streams of events. You attach functions as handlers on the end of these streams and uh, they usually end up manipulating the application state. And the application state is also often implemented as a, uh, as a stream, so you have other parts of the application, often the render function, listening to that state and just rendering whenever the state changes. 
This has gotten popular because it's really nice to have most of your application be stateless. Because state is a major cause of bugs, having state contained in just one or two places makes it a lot easier to reason about your application and prevents a lot of bugs. Let's take a look at one of the examples on the Bacon.js front page. Bacon.js is a uh, streaming library of sorts. So what we see here is a simple uh, counter widget. See here that when I press up, uh, it goes up and when I press down it the counter here goes down nothing strange about that uh, and you see that the up button here that's up the up button here and the down the, the down button is this uh, down identify here and the counter here that is this counter here so you see that we call as event stream here uh, and we are uh, interested in the click events. So up and down will now be streams of events. What we see them doing here is that they call the uh, map method on the, uh, on the up stream. And they map that stream to once. So now every time we get an up click event, that will result in a transformation to once. The column merge here, would, but we're gonna look at this down call here first. So what they do is that they call map on the down stream. Remember down is a stream of uh, clicks on the down button. So uh, each such click will be transformed into a minus one value. And now they will call pass that stream, the stream of all the minus ones, and merge that with the other stream, all the, the streams of the, uh, uh, the ones, the plus ones. Uh, and now this entire thing here, this entire line, is now going to be a new stream with all our plus ones and minus ones. And what we're going to do is they are going to uh, call scan on that stream. And scan, it is, uh, it is basically just a streamy version of reduce. Uh, it, it just does exactly what reduce does. It gets the, uh, takes the last value and the new value that it gets and it adds them together and it will emit the new uh, the new number that gets as a value so this will effectively constantly counter the stream which is also stream will return or constantly emit the new counter value and if you take a look at what they do with counter here is that they assign that uh, value uh, or the values that are continually emitted from uh, the counter, they will uh, assign them to the text property of the uh, counter element. That is, that is how this all ties together. What I think that we should take away from the last two examples is that streams compose well together. I really feel like I'm coming back to composition all the time when I'm talking about functional programming, but it is really at the core of what functional programming is. When we model our clicks as streams of events, we get access to all this stream tooling that we can use on them. The streaming tooling doesn't really care what this is a stream of. It doesn't know that it's clicks or even that it's events. It just knows that it is a stream of values. That's all it needs in order to help us out with modeling streams and running things like map and filter and stuff on them. So on one hand, you have these simple functions without side effects. They just take a value and they do something with it and they return a new value. On the other side, you have piles of input. It might be a big file that is 10 gigabytes big or it might be mouse clicks. If you model your mouse clicks or your uh, file as a stream, you can actually have the stream be this adapter that allows you to use and reuse all those simple functions on 
both of those kinds of events. And this is so fundamental for functional programming. We have input here, our data here, and we have our functions here. They are separate so that we can reuse them as much as possible. Data and functions are separate. They are not garbled together like they are in object-oriented programming. That's it for today. We have learned that a stream is a flow of values that will arrive whenever they feel like. If you want to start playing with this, there are a couple of streaming libraries out there. Uh, RxJS, Bacon and Highland. And I'm gonna link some of them in the description. As usual, the next episode of Fun Fun Function will be released on Monday morning, 8 a.m. GMT time. Do not miss it! Subscribe to me on the Twitter! Until next Monday morning, stay curious.